Grace and peace to you on this day. From God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So this was uh, a few years ago. Looking back at my uh, calendar, I think I've narrowed it down to 2006, the December of 2006. Uh, we had planned, it was December, for our Christmas pageant. This was while I was still pastor up in Avon, Connecticut. Uh, it was one of those years where the, the calendar kind of worked out funny. I mean, normally our procedure was like we do here. We have the pageant on the, the third Sunday of Advent, and in case of snow, we could, uh, or other inclement weather, we could move it to the following Sunday, which we've done today. Uh, there was one other piece to this, and that was we did the pageant in the afternoon. It was kind of its own service. Uh, you know, we had different readers and, and choirs and the kids telling the story and a little sermon and uh, cookies after. It was very nice. But when the calendar worked out a certain way, we changed the plan slightly. Because that year, December 24th, was the last Sunday of Advent. And since there was already a full day worth of stuff in the evening, uh, we had the Christmas pageant as the morning service. What we had not counted on was the huge snowstorm that came Saturday night. It snowed and snowed and snowed and snowed. I think there was like a foot or a foot and a half of snow on the ground uh, in the morning. Now we knew that would be, we cleared and plowed and the walkways salted and everything fine for when things started around five o'clock that afternoon. But in the morning, not so much. We had to cancel the pageant. And you can imagine the phone call I had to make to the director. You know, we, just like here, people had worked really hard on the pageant. They had, they had studied it for weeks. The roles were handed out. The, the lines were rehearsed. The songs were learned. All of that. But because of the snow, we had to not do it. And so I called her up and we had that conversation that you dread when you have to cancel something and you don't want to. Uh, I'm sorry, we can't do the pageant this morning. The roads aren't plowed, the parking lot isn't plowed, the walkways aren't done, nobody can get here. Well, can't we do it at the early Christmas Eve service? Sounds like a good idea. Except that service, just like ours, was kind of the Super Bowl of all church services. Everything you can imagine uh, happened. You know, choirs singing, musicians playing, leaders already in place to lead everything. I mean, it was already jam-packed. You couldn't put another two minutes into that hour, especially because we had another service right after it where it was just about after you were done uh, singing Silent Night and shaking everybody's hand to wish them a Merry Christmas, you had enough time to change the hymn numbers on the board and grab your papers and start welcoming the next group. Sorry, we can't move it to that early service. And that next one was too late, and then it was way too late to even consider something else. It was a Christmas pageant that wasn't about to happen. That's what this story from Matthew reminds me of. We're used to the Luke version of Christmas. The version that the kids showed us with the, with the innkeeper, with the holy place for them, with the shepherds coming, with the angels singing, all the parts we remember, they're all there. The light around the manger guiding our way. Mary, this kind of patron of what it means to be a, a faithful person, listening to the will of God. You're going to have a child, okay? Singing her songs of praise and thanksgiving to what God is doing in her and for the world. But that's the other side of the story. This story is about Joseph. The birth of Jesus the Messiah took place this way, Matthew tells us. Joseph finds out that Mary's pregnant. He's an upstanding guy. He knows he's not the father. He starts to think oh, he's not a jerk about it. He's not going to humiliate her publicly or disgrace her in a real demeaning way. He wants to dismiss her quietly so both of them can just get on with their lives. Until, of course, God intervenes. He has that dream and the angel comes to him with a great Christmas message. Do not be afraid. Take Mary as your wife. You will have a son. His name is to be Jesus, which means he will save his people from their sins. He is the promised Emmanuel. God is with us always. I wonder what would happen if he didn't respond yes to this. What would happen in this story of Christmas? Would Mary just go to her cousin Elizabeth's and have a quiet birth there with a midwife? 
Would the shepherds have come down the hills? What about the wise men, my favorite part? What would happen to them? Would the star guide them there? Would they still stop by King Herod? Would they still be warned in a dream to go back another way? Would Herod still try to kill all the children? Would Jesus be threatened in a new way? But Joseph does respond. He has this aha moment. He sees the luminaries. He sees the power of God in the promise that is happening. First he sees it as everybody else's drama, but now he's caught up in the story too. We're called to join that same story. The Christmas pageant that almost didn't happen took place this way. The snow threatened to cancel it completely, but thanks to some level heads and some open minds, we moved it to January. It was the end of Christmas. We moved it to the story when the wise men come, to the epiphany, to January. After everybody had put in all the decorations away, after all the boxes had been opened, after all the paper thrown out, after all the cardboard recycled, after all the toys played with, after everybody back to school. It was there. We shared in the story again, the Christmas pageant that almost didn't happen. We're called to remember this story. We're called to enter the story. Not just once a year when we pull it out and the kids tell it to us. Not just Christmas Eve when we gather once again. But maybe in January. Maybe throughout the whole year. To have that epiphany, that aha moment for us that this child who was born will save his people, you and me from their sins. To remember that promise and cherish it always that God is with us. As we enter these days that get us ever closer to the manger, Christmas Eve, two days away, we're still caught up in happy holidays or Merry Christmas or if you're a real church nerd, have a blessed Advent. But I invite you to this. Have a happy and early Epiphany. Amen.